You can also have... So one method that we, you can use viewing windows. So the process that the graphing calculator uses to find the intersection point is called Newton's method. So we're going to experiment with what's New, what Newton's method actually states. So we're going to experiment with what actually Newton's... So we're going to experiment with what's called Newton's method. So numerical root finders, such as the graphing calculator or any computer algebra system, they use a variety of methods but most of them use Newton's method, or sometimes it's referred to as the Newton-Raphson method. Here's how the method works. So remember that when you try to find the intersection point on a graphing calculator, the calculator always asks you to enter in a guess. So the reason why that's the case is Newton's method starts off with an initial guess for the real root, and that's called x sub 1. Then, Newton's method uses the tangent line to the curve at this point, x1, f of x1, from the guess that we've made. And we approximate the curve, calling this point x sub 2, where the tangent line intersects the x-axis. So let's see how this works with this graph. And so this sequence... And so, this method will give you a sequence of approximation roots. So we can repeat this process by taking x2, and you'll get a point, and where's it? With x sub 1 replaced with at x sub 2, comma f of x, comma f of x sub 2, f prime of x sub 2. curve or x closer to the x-intercept. So one thing that you should notice is that each time that you approximate, so that one thing for functions of this type, and that's in the last two graphs, there are some certain, you can see that x sub 2, our guess So if your initial guess has Newton's method fail, then you need a better initial x of 1 guess, or approximation should be chosen. So let's try example 1 on how Newton's method actually works. Starting with x of 1 equals 2, we're going to find the third approximation to the root of this cubic equation, x cubed minus 2x minus 5 equals 0. So first step is to identify what the function is. So f of x is x cubed subtract 2x subtract 5 because this is being set equal to 0 and the initial approximation is x sub 1 and we are going to use 2 now why you might be asking 2 why is you might be asking why are we using x equals 2 well if you choose x equals 1 it'll just be more approximations that will be needed to get a more accurate answer. So you might be wondering why are we using x of 1 equals 2? It turns out that this is exactly the same problem and the same guess that Newton used to demonstrate his method. So we're going to use Newton's method. To find x sub 3, which is the third approximation. And we're going to use this iterative process. So x sub n plus 1 is equal to x sub n. Subtract f of x sub n divided by f prime of x sub n. So let's find x sub 2. x sub 2 is x sub 1, the previous x coordinate. Subtract f of x sub 1 divided by f prime of x sub 1. So we know what x sub 1 is. It was the initial guess. So it will be uh, 2 minus f of 2 divided by f prime of 2. Well, we need to calculate the derivative. So the derivative of f of x is 3x squared subtract 2. And you'll find out if you substitute 2 into the original function, 
the y value is negative 1, so 2 subtract negative 1, divided by the derivative evaluated at 2 is 10. So x sub 2 is equal to 2 plus 1 tenth, or 2.1. That's the second approximation to the real 0. Okay, one more approximation. We need to calculate x sub 3. That would be x sub 2. Subtract f of x sub 2 divided by f prime of x sub 2. So this gives us x sub 3 is equal to 2.1. Subtract f of 2.1 divided by f prime of 2.1. And this is approximately equal to 2.0946. So this gives us three approximations. We approximated initial guess of 2, then we came up with 2.1, and then the third approximation is 2.0946. And it turns out that the third approximation, x of 3, which is about 2.0946, is accurate to four decimal places to the actual real zero. Okay, so that's how Newton's method works. Suppose now that we want to achieve a given accuracy. Let's say we want to be accurate up to eight decimal places using Newton's method. So you might be wondering, when do you stop the algorithm whenever you want eight decimal places of accuracy? Well, the general rule of thumb is you can stop when successive approximations, x sub n and x sub n plus 1, so two successive approximations, they are the same up to eight decimal places. So this is where a computer or calculator can use um, successive numerical calculations very quickly that can help you find a real zero. So example two, we're going to use Newton's method to find the real root of the equation correct to six decimal places for the transcendental equation that we saw earlier in the video, cosine of x equals x. So here's the graph of cosine of x and the graph of y equals x. Notice that they intersect very close to x equals one. So when we use Newton's method, it might be a good guess to use 1 as our initial x of 1. So we're going to rewrite the equation so that the equation is equal to 0. So cosine of x equals x. We're going to rewrite this as cosine of x subtract, subtract x equals 0. Then let f of x be the left side of the equation. Cosine of x subtract x so that the derivative of f is negative sine of x subtract 1. So now we're going to use Newton's method. To find a formula To calculate successive approximations. Okay, so what that means is we know Newton's method is x sub n plus 1 equals x sub n subtract f of x sub n divided by f prime of x sub n. Let's find out what the formula would be in terms of x sub n. So it's x sub n, subtract the function evaluated at x sub n, the original function. So cosine of x sub n, subtract x, which is x sub n, and then divide by the derivative evaluated at x sub n. 
So negative sine of x sub n, then subtract 1. Notice that you can factor out a negative from the numerator and also from the denominator. And this will simplify to x sub n plus cosine x sub n subtract x sub n divided by sine x sub n plus 1. So this gives us a way to calculate x sub 2 and x sub 3 and x sub 4 very quickly now. We're going to use an initial approximation of x sub 1 equals 1. Now, the reason why we're using x sub 1 equals 1 is because we can look at the graph and see that the intersection is really close to x sub 1 equals 1. If we chose x equals x sub 1 equals 3, then we may have to do several approximations more than we would if we chose something that we know is already very close to the real zero or the intersection point. So let's calculate x sub 2. x sub 2 is x sub 1 plus cosine of 1, subtract 1, divided by sine of 1 plus 1 using the previous formula. And it turns out this is approximately equal to 0.75036 387. Make sure that your calculator is in radians when you calculate cosine of 1 and sine of 1. So that's the second approximation. Now we can calculate the third. x sub 2 plus uh, cosine of x sub 2 minus x sub 2 divided by sine of x sub 2 plus 1. So if you substitute in this x sub 2, so Keep in mind, the more decimals that you keep, the more accurate your next approximation will be. So x of 3, we're going to get an approximation of 0.73911289. I'm going to try to keep 8 decimal places so we can compare the first 8 decimals. Okay, keep going. We want to make sure that the first 6 decimal places are correct. So x of 4 would be x of 3 plus cosine of x sub 3 minus x sub 3 divided by sine x sub 3 plus 1 and that is approximately 0 0.739085 so we're we agree up to the third decimal place now or the fourth decimal place is different let's try one more x sub 5 would be, again, x sub 4 plus cosine x sub 4 minus x sub 4 divided by sine x sub 4 plus 1, and that is approximately 0 0.739 So you can see that the fourth approximation and the fifth approximation agree up to eight decimal places. So since x sub 4 and x sub 5 agree to six decimal places, then we can say the root to the equation f of x equals 0, which was cosine of x equals x, is about, and we're going to call the real 0 r, it's about 0 0.739085138513. So let's see how this approximation looks if we use the graphing calculator. So go to y equals, enter in cosine of x as y1, and y2 will just be x. So then go to the standard graphing window, zoom standard. So our graph will match the graph that's provided. We believe that the approximation, initial approximation can be one. So let's use second calc. And this time we'll use the intersection method, which is also a, a variation of Newton's method on the graphing calculator. 
So the first curve was cosine of x, that's correct, hit enter. y2 is x, that's correct, hit enter. Guess, we want an initial guess of 1, so enter in 1. And the intersection tells us it happens when x is approximately 0 0.739, 0851. And that is extremely close to what we have. It is exactly the same up to seven decimals. So then the last thing, you might wonder why even bothering use, using Newton's method if a graphing calculator or a computer is available, so why even bother at all? Well, it is not very easy to zoom in over and over and over to find the roots, but you can. So if you only want one or two decimal places of accuracy, then zooming once or twice is not a bad method. However, if you want six decimals or more, Newton's method may help you with this. So if you want six or even eight decimal places, then zooming six, seven, eight, nine, ten times, it can be very tiresome. So a much faster and efficient way to use Newton's method would be to graph the functions on the calculator like we did on this previous example to even get started and then you can use the graph to help you make your initial guess or initial approximation and then you can use Newton's method to finish like we did in example two. So this finishes up our discussion on Newton's method. If you have any questions about the two examples that we did involving Newton's method please let me know or if you have any questions while you work on the homework, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you at the next video when we talk about antiderivatives.